Welcome back to Vanguard Yuka's channel. If you don't know me, I'm Yuka. Today I'm gonna show you 10 mountain bike products that I actually use. This is my second review video. And last time I showed you six last longing mountain bike gears. And again, what I value is cheap and durable, comfortable to use, and makes me feel happy. So, let's get started! As I declared in the last video, now I've got race face ambush knee pads. Now I don't have to take my shoes off every time I go down. First, I realized it was painful to wear the knee pads because it was still stiff. But now I don't mind pedaling with knee pads on if it's not too hot. Not like my previous knee pads. After more than one year of usage, they still fit nice and tight. And still, they have a little tear, but looking good. Oh my god. What? These are IXS Hack Evo Elbow Guards. I wanted to have a two straps because my last elbow pads moved up if I slid or moved down because it was getting loose. Now I look absolutely ready to crash. However, sadly, this was wrapped after two weeks of purchase. It seems like the size of the product is a little bit smaller than what the size chart said. According to the chart, my arms are kids large. That's impossible. So I bought one size bigger, extra small, but it might be still too small. And I've never had a tight elbow pads before. I didn't expect this repercussion. When I go down, my arms bent and working so hard. That means so much blood going into my arms. And if the elbow pads tighten my arms, they kill my blood circulation and my hands go numb. Oh, yo -ho. This was disappointing. But this was ripped about two weeks after the purchase. So IXS replaced them with new ones. This is IXS Calf Evo Elbow Guards. They also upgraded the elbow pads because they didn't have a size I wanted. So the calf one is almost look like the same as the hack one. But as you can see, they put softer pads here. So I think they are preventing this to happen. And also, calf have a longer straps on upper arms. So it's easier to adjust the tightness. And actually, extra small fits quite well. Now they don't kill my blood circulations and also they don't move when I crash. I wasn't happy. I'm happy. Sorry. In the last video, I asked you all which shorts you would recommend and I got so many comments. Thank you so much. And I've got so many nice shorts now. I try not to buy shorts online because I wanted to try them on first. So they have to be in store and happen to be the right size for me. First, the first shorts, it's Troidy Design Skyline. They're very thin and comfortable, especially on hot summer rides. However, after rubbing my butt with my 29er rear wheel, over and over, they developed a hole just in three months. Probably, this wasn't their fault. Getting a hole on my butt is inevitable as long as I kept riding 29er rear wheel. So I waited with my underwear open to the public until I changed to a smaller rear wheel which happened the last fall. So finally, I could buy new shorts. So those are Race Face 
Trabas shorts. What I like most about those shorts is high stretch waistband. So there's no button or a zipper. It's very comfortable. I was worried about those bands to be uh, stretched out, but after six months, it's still nice and tight. It's just to get dirty so easily because they are light color. Next! So those are Endura MT500 spray shorts. Second, those are the only shorts I bought online because Eric really loves those shorts and I know he's wearing the same shorts for a long, long time. And it still fits really good. So back half is waterproof. So your butt doesn't get wet by splashing or sitting on a wet saddle. Your underwear is always protected. So those are indispensable gear for BC riders. So I bought another pair when I found them on sale at the shop. However, those aren't meant for summer rides. It gets really, really hot. But hey, who wanna ride with soggy underwear? Ooh. So those are Troy Lee Design Lilium Shorts. I bought those shorts because I needed one more pair of shorts for summer. So I own six shorts so far and those are the only shorts. I can put my phones in my pocket and I can pedal comfortably. Having said that, I do not like to ride with my phone in the pocket because uh, you know how often I crash, right? When I choose shorts, I don't want any loose material around my crotch area. Nobody wanna worry about whether their shorts stack on a saddle when they try to do a drop. Oh, case. Oh. Next is hydration pack. My first hydration pack couldn't stand six years of repeated abuse and finally the zipper broke. So I had to replace it with the new hydration pack. So this is Usui Airborne 9 and this is much bigger than my previous pack. And this one also comes with phone holder. So the biggest difference from my previous pack is that this four-point harness system, it's just like a GoPro mount. And I was worried about my boobs squash to the side, but surprisingly, this pack doesn't bother me at all. So this cross harness system prevents bouncing on my back. I feel like this is part of my body. However, after a few months of usage, this front strap is already stretched out. I can replace this front strap for $25, but I think they can do better. I like big packs because I hate being hungry. And sometimes I just wanna spend time in the mountain sleeping or reading books or listening to audiobooks. Whatever you say, climbing is boring and painful. Especially for those who just started riding mountain bikes. While climbing, listening to those sweet love stories. So when you get to the top, your heart is already pounding and excited to go down. If you don't like big packs, there are also smaller packs. Next is One Up EDC V2 Tool. You might have watched Paul the Panther's video, but I installed this with his help. So if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. This EDC tool sleeps in my head tube and has 10 function multi tool. Good enough for a quick adjustment on trail. Tire lever. It's useless. I don't know how you do it, but first of all, I need two tire levers, which has a hook. What I like about this tool is those holes. Those are for quick links. Very neat. I love it. Eric also have the same EDC V2 tool, but his tool lives in this EDC pump. If you don't have a proper tool to install in the head tube, or if you don't want to go through any trouble, 
This may be your option. Last one is my favorite tool these days. The later hanger adjuster. The most common problem I came across is around the derailleur. I hit rocks everywhere. When the shifting problem occurs, 50% of the chance the hanger is bent. In this case, this tool is coming handy. Put this tool into the derailleur hanger and measure the distance to the rim. If the distance is almost the same perpendicularly and horizontally, my hunger is straight. If not, I can gently bend it back. This is a cheap one, so there's a little play. But still, this is my lifesaver. So that was 10 mountain bike products that I actually use. The links to all the products in the video are in the description. If you have any recommendation for an audiobook that makes my day sparkle, let me know in the comment. Thank you for watching and see you next time.